Hello everyone, I'm the Lumble Humberjack, and today we're playing Minecraft. But it's not just any Minecraft, no. It's a Redstone Secrets Day, and our topic of discussion is the Humble Comparator. So, strap yourselves in, and let's learn about comparators. So, let's review what we already know about comparators. We know that comparators compare things. And in this case, when a comparator is in its normal mode, if the signal strength coming in from the back is more than that from coming in the sides, it will pass that signal strength on. In contrast, if the signal strength coming in the back is less than that of the one coming in from one of the sides, then it will not pass the signal strength on. And lastly, if we put the comparator in subtraction mode and turn it on, we see, ah, We've got 15 coming in the back, 14 coming in from one of the sides, 15 minus 14 is one, and so that's how much signal strength comes out the side. If we were to turn this off, we would see that it would jump up to two because now the difference is two. 15 and 13 makes two. And that's what we covered in the last video. But there's so much more. The main thing that we wanna talk about today is that comparators can read the information about how full something is. So if you put some items inside of a chest, for instance, we'll get a signal out the other side of the comparator. And the comparator can actually read the contents of this chest through opaque blocks. We notice that if it's a transparent block, we're not going to get a redstone signal. But if you have an opaque block in between your comparator and the thing you're trying to measure, you'll still get a signal. So we're going to think about what kinds of things can we read the fullness of and exactly how it all works. Now, one thing you're going to want to be able to do for certain is calculate the amount of signal that is going to come out of the comparator. And we do that with the following formula. The signal strength is the floor of 1 plus 14 times the sum of the relative fullness of each slot divided by the number of slots. There's a little bit of nuance on how we actually compute the maximum number of items that a container can contain because there's different stack sizes, but we'll talk about that. For now, what we want to remember is that the comparator is measuring how full the container is. Now, we're going to look at all of the different types of containers that you can put things in and see how it works with comparators. The first three that we want to go over is the smoker, the blast furnace, and the furnace. So if you look, there's actually three different slots in the furnace. There's the place where you can put the fuel, the things that you can burn, and the outputs. And the same is for the blast furnace and for the smoker. So we can see that when they're mostly full, we're gonna get a signal strength of 14. If we look inside this furnace, we see, ah oh yes, it's mostly full. I'm just missing a little bit of charcoal here. So we would expect the signal strength to be very high. When we're looking at the brewing stand, we can see that there's a place for blaze powder as well as water bottles and something to put in them. So as we fill those slots up, we're gonna see this number go up. In fact, if we put three water bottles in, it's gonna jump all the way up to 12. If we take one away, it'll drop by three to nine and so forth. And you'll get the last three by filling up this slot here. We can also read how full hoppers are. So right now we're getting a signal strength of six and we've filled up uh, two fifths of the hopper. If we put three full stacks inside the item hopper, what we see is that we have an output of nine from the comparator. Similarly, if we put three stacks of 16 ender pearls in the item hopper, we're also going to get an output of nine. And if we put three non-stackable items in the item hopper, we will also get an output of nine. The main takeaway here is that if you want to think about things in terms of stacks of 64, then the ones that stack up to 16, each of those items are going to be worth four, and the non-stackable items are each going to be worth 64 themselves. And that idea is going to let us build things like sorting systems. Useful for every player. Okay, I have a simple circuit here, and let's go ahead and put a chest up here so that we can see what's happening. And right now, what I've got is 18, 19, 20, 21 sticks inside of these slots and a space for redstone dust. And right now, because that torch is on, this hopper is locked, and we are reading a signal strength of one coming out of this comparator. Now, if we were to even add one more bit of redstone dust, we'll see that it pulses, goes up to two, and it lets one piece of redstone dust going through. 
So we're leveraging the idea that comparators can measure the relative fullness of this hopper in order to make a sorting system. So if you have things flowing down your sorting system and going over these hoppers, let's say that we drop a stack of redstone dust in, well, it's gonna fall into this hopper here and we're gonna get a signal strength of more than two, which is going to tell this circuit to turn off the redstone torch and start allowing items through. And that's the basics of a sorting system, but maybe we'll go over things in more detail later. Hopper minecarts work similarly to hoppers as long as they're on an activator rail. And we've also got droppers and dispensers, which have nine slots in total instead of the five that the hopper had. So we're gonna get a little bit more control over the redstone signal coming out there. And of course, you can measure things in chests, trap chests, barrels, and shulker boxes. And the thing to remember, of course, is that if you wanna think in terms of the stacks of 64, that each one stack of 64 is worth one of the stacks of items that can stack up to 16. And each of those is worth one non-stackable item. They all give the same output. Now, there's also a few surprising things that you can measure with comparators. You can measure the amount of honey in bee nests and in beehives. Right now, our comparator is throwing out a signal strength of one, so I know that this should be at stage one for honey production. You can also measure cake, which I found really surprising. Uh, each piece of cake is gonna be worth two redstone signals. So if we eat one, it's gonna go down by two, and if we keep eating, it goes down by two each time until there's nothing left because there were only seven slices of cake. You can measure how relatively full cauldrons are. So if it's full, you'll get a signal strength of three. And if you start taking water out of it, it drops by one each time until there is nothing in the cauldron. Putting lava in your cauldron is always gonna give you a signal strength of three because you can't pick it up in glass bottles. Lava's too hot. We can measure how full a composter is. So if it starts at zero, we can start filling it up. And every time that we add one layer to the composter, the redstone signal is gonna go up by one all the way up until seven, and then it pops and turns to eight. Another surprising thing that gives off a redstone signal is the end frame. If you put an eye of ender inside the end portal frame, it'll throw off a signal strength of 15. You can also get a signal strength from item frames. Every time you turn the item on the item frame, the signal strength changes by one. And since there's eight different positions for an item on the item frame, you've got eight different signal strengths that can come out of that. And this can be fun to use for things like combination locks and such. We've also got the humble lectern with a book on it. And what the book is gonna do is measure the ratio of what page you're on to the total number of pages in the book. So I've got 15 pages in the book, which means that each page is gonna change the signal strength by one. If there were 30 pages in my book instead of 15, then it would take two pages to change the signal strength instead of one. We've also recently got chiseled bookshelves, which are really cool, not just for aesthetics, but for their redstone capacity. So you can store books inside of these, and when you interact with it, it's going to change the output signal to the last slot that you interacted with, starting at one here and going all the way up to six. So you can fill in all of these books however you want, but whatever the last one you interacted with is going to determine the output signal. We've also got respawn anchors that give you three redstone signal for every quarter full recharge you have. And finally, we've got skulk sensors that are gonna give an output based on the type of sound that they hear. And calibrated skulk sensors can be calibrated to hear different types of sound, but that definitely deserves its own video because that's kind of complicated, but also fun. And the last thing that comparators will read is the jukebox, which actually outputs a signal based on which music disc you put in. So if we grab the pig step music disc, we're gonna see a signal strength of 13, which we do, hooray. And if we stop the song, it goes back to zero. So that's kind of neat. But that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for hanging out and I hope you learned something new. I know that I did. I didn't know that thing about cake before. I love measuring cake. But yeah, let me know down in the comments if you learned something new and tell me what you wanna see on the next episode of Redstone Secrets. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, and maybe even the notification bell. 
I stream on Twitch. I stream on YouTube. I do all the streaming. I play all the games. So come hang out. Have a good time. And, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right.